Welcome to the West Wing Week, your guide to everything that's happening at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. This week, Education Month continued, with President Obama asking Congress to fix No Child Left Behind before the start of the next school year, and monitoring the relief efforts in Japan offering America's help. The Prime Minister of Denmark, the Taoiseach of Ireland, and the Chicago Blackhawks all stopped by. That's March 11th to the 17th, or punching above your weight. Denmark is a country that, uh, in American terms, uh, punches above its weight. <laughs> On Friday, March 11th, President Obama went to the EEOB to address rising gas prices and take questions from the media. But first he stopped to acknowledge the tragedy unfolding in Japan after the massive earthquake and tsunami there. Today's events uh, remind us of just how fragile life can be. Uh, our hearts go out to our friends in Japan and across the region, and we're going to stand with them as they recover and rebuild from this tragedy. Later that afternoon, President Obama welcomed the Stanley Cup champion Chicago Blackhawks to the White House. Uh, uh, where's the enforcer? Come on. <laughs> can't look look. If somebody knocks his teeth out, his hands all messed up. While in town, the Blackhawks visited servicemen and women at Walter Reed Hospital and held a street hockey clinic with the First Lady on the south lawn of the White House. <laughs> on Monday, March 14th, the President visited Kenmore Middle School in Arlington, Virginia with Education Secretary Arnie Duncan to make a speech on education and discuss how to prepare our kids for the 21st century. President Obama is urging reform of No Child Left Behind by the start of the new school year. He stressed that we must not only leave No Child Behind, but also help every student get ahead. Uh, that's why you got the gray hair like me. That's why you got the gray hair like me. The best economic policy is one that produces more college graduates. And that's why, for the sake of our children and our economy and America's future, we're going to have to do a better job educating every single one of our sons and daughters. While at Kenmore, the president also visited a classroom where students were learning about the Harlem Renaissance by exploring arts, poetry, and music. Once you've studied uh, Ellington, you've got to keep going. <laughs> Coltrane, Miles Davis. Herbie Hancock, <laughs> Louis Armstrong, Thank you, Mr. President. Ella Fitzgerald. Thank you. <laughs> Back at the White House, the President met with Denmark's Prime Minister Rasmussen to discuss the strong ties between the United States and Denmark, the common global challenges our two nations face, including the situation in the Middle East and economic and environmental issues. Special importance has been uh, our appreciation of the sacrifices that have been made by Danish troops in Afghanistan uh, and uh, the extraordinary leadership that uh, Denmark has shown uh, as part of uh, ISAF. On Tuesday, March 15th, President Obama did several interviews with local television stations from the map room of the White House on the importance of education reform and the need to fix No Child Left Behind. Investments in education are an investment in our future and uh, I would rather see us make cuts in some things that we don't need to make sure that we're funding the things that we do, and I think education is one of those things that's going to be absolutely critical for our future. How are you? The president also spoke to ESPN in the library, filling out his bracket for the men's and women's NCAA basketball tournaments. I've never picked all number one seats. He also urged Americans to give to those in need in Japan. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to do uh, on the show was, as people are filling out their brackets, this is obviously uh, a national pastime. We all have a great time. Uh, it's a great diversion. Uh, but I know a lot of people are thinking, how can they help uh, the Japanese people during this uh, time of need? If you go to USAID.gov, USAID.gov, that will list uh, all the nonprofits, the charities that are helping out there. Later that afternoon, the president went to Arlington National Cemetery to pay his respects to Frank Buckles of the United States Army. Mr. Buckles was 110 years old and the last surviving veteran of World War I. On Wednesday, March 16th, the President spent the day in meetings, including one with USAID Administrator Raj Shaw, to discuss humanitarian assistance efforts in the Middle East, Africa, Haiti, Afghanistan and Pakistan, and the disaster assistance being provided to the Japanese government as they respond to the recent major earthquake and tsunami. On Thursday, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, President Obama welcomed the Taoiseach of Ireland to the White House, a traditional visit where they discussed the mutual heritage and deep ties between our two nations. Uh, we've obviously have the strongest possible relationship with Ireland. Uh, the warmth, the affection, uh, the familial and 
person-to-person -person, uh, contacts between our two countries uh, extend far beyond uh, any uh, you know, dry policy issues. Uh, there is, is just a, an incredible bond between our two countries. Later, the Vice President joined the President and Taoiseach for a St. Patrick's Day lunch at the United States Capitol and a reception on the state floor at the White House. That afternoon, President Obama went to the Japanese Embassy in Washington, D.C. to offer his condolences to the Japanese people. Uh, we are working 24 hours and uh, their sympathy and assistance is, uh, means a lot to all Japanese. Thank you very much. Thank you. To find out more information on any of these topics or to see complete videos of these events, go to whitehouse.gov. And thanks again for checking out your West Wing Week. That's Biden's shirt, and I'm going to tell him you said it Biden's shirt. <laughs> I can take my picture now to this one. <laughs> 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 That's how you elevate development. You